All right, so we've built an app that you know will accept incoming text and auto respond um, with some message, okay? And we let the user change the message. And in fact, when a message comes in, the app will speak it out loud. So if you can't get to your phone, you can at least hear what the text what the text is. Okay, the one problem with our app right now is if the user does change the message, um, it works while the app's running. But if you close the app and reopen it, that that custom message will be gone. And and users expect whatever they enter probably to be saved persistently, okay, even when the app is closed and reopened. Um, so let me show you how to how to deal with persistent data. And you know, another word for that is database data, right? Well, App Inventor has a component called TinyDB. It's very simple to use. And let me drag one of these guys in. It's a non-visible component. And it basically is the database on your phone. And you can store things to it and get stuff out. So if I go over to the blocks editor, um, what I want to do is when the user changes this message, right, the custom message, not only do I want to stick it in this label, I also want to stick it in my database. Okay, so I'll go to TinyDB, grab this store value block. Okay, that lets me store a value in the database. Um, you've got to give it a tag, which is kind of the name of the data in the database. So I'm going to call this guy custom response. And this is just a text block. All right, so that's kind of the tag or the name of the data in the database. And really what I want to store is whatever's been put in this label. I want to store it so in the database so when I close the app and reopen it, I can stick that right back in the label. Okay, so what I want to store is what's in custom response label. So I'll grab a reference to its text property and stick it in there. Okay, so this is, this is good. Right now, when the user changes and submits, I will store whatever they changed to my database. Okay, well, I also need to get that data from the database back in when the app's reopened. And if you go to screen, uh, there's a block called initialize, and this block gets triggered every time the app opens, when the app is initialized. Okay, and I kind of want to do the opposite of this. What I want to do is go get a value from the database and stick it in the label when the app opens. Okay, so I know I want to change my custom response label dot text. Okay, and what I want to change it to is what's in the database. And you'll notice TinyDB has a store value and a get value. It's almost like the opposite. Go get it from the database. I'm just going to copy my tag uh, text block because I want to go get that same stuff. We only have one piece of information in our database, so you know, the tag is, you know, there's just one tag. Okay, you could have more information in the database and then the tag tells you which one you're getting. Okay, so simply put, I'd like to do this. I'd like to go to the database, grab whatever data was put there, named custom response, stick it into my label. Okay, this is great, but there's one complication. The first time you run the app, or before the user's ever put anything, you know, put any custom response in, there's nothing there. And what we would be doing is changing our um, custom response to blank that first time. And really what we want is, if, there, if there's never been a custom response entered, we want to keep our kind of default, um, or default response. Okay, so you know, in general, when you go get stuff from the database, you need to think about that first time um, that the database is, is um, dealt with. And I'm going to put a little comment here. Um, let's deal with first time app is opened and there is no data. Okay, so almost always you're going to have to deal with this special case. Okay, so this is kind of what we want to do, but we really need to do a little test first. So I'm going to add an if statement. Okay, and I'm going to put it up here. And what I want to know is, when I go get data from the database, is it empty? Is there nothing there? Okay, and it's a little tricky how we do that, but I'm going to copy these blocks. And what I want to know is, if what I get back from the database is its length, 
is its length greater than zero? Okay, so if there's nothing in the database, the length will be zero. So what I want to know is, is the length of what I get back greater than zero? I'll just type in a zero to get a zero block. And so this is a little complicated, but we'll, we'll take a look at it here. Um, and you're going to see blocks like this in a lot of apps that use databases. But basically what it's saying is, go get some data from the database if the length is greater than zero. So if there's something there, so the user submitted something before, then let's stick what they, what they entered back into this response label. Okay, if what is in the database is empty, let's ignore the database and just keep our default text. Okay, so there's, here's our program. And I think this is what we want. Now there's, there's, you know, this is what the blocks are, but there's one further complication. You cannot test your app, um, at least persistence. You can't test database stuff with the live testing. You know, live testing is when you connect to these guys and you're kind of running the app, but really that app has not been installed on the, on the emulator or the phone. Okay, so what we have to do to test database stuff is actually download it to the to the phone, download the app, the APK file. So I'm going to do that. This is the app we're connected to. It's 5556. And if I come over to the designer and say package for phone, so this means you know grab the APK file, the actual Android app file, and I want to download it to the connected phone. Okay, and this this can take two minutes take a minute, three minutes, you know, kind of depending on how busy the app inventor server. So it's unfortunate we can't test this very quickly. You've actually got to download it to the phone and then you can test kind of the persistence part of, of the app. So I'm going to go ahead and close this guy. Um, let's close the, that's the testing app that was running. And this thing's going to package um, and, and uh, you know, like I said, it'll take a couple minutes. Once it gets there, we'll be able to test to make sure the persistence is working. And I'll show you kind of how that how that works. Okay, so our application is successfully downloaded to the phone. That's good. I'll say OK. And in fact, if I go over to the phone, I'll see the app. Um, in this case, it's no texting while, while driving. OK, so my app is now on the emulator, not in testing mode, but the actual app is, is there. I'm going to disconnect or change or. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be connected right now because I don't want the testing app to come to come back up. Um, so what I'm going to do is reset connections, okay, and that'll cause it so this thing will not be connected to our live testing, okay. So now we can test our app. So I'm going to open up um, No Texting While Driving. So this is the app I just downloaded. It looks just like our testing app, of course, um, but you know we're not connected anymore, so there's no testing going on. Um, here's my app, and let's just make sure that um, things still work as we expect. So, hey, what's up? Let's send that from this emulator to this emulator. Receive the text from 5,554 messages. Hey, what's up? Okay, good. So this, our, our installed app correctly uh, spoke out the text and responded. You'll notice this this came back to 5554. Okay, but what we really want to test is our persistence. Okay, so if I change the message, um, I'm playing hoops and I submit. Okay, I think now if I texted this phone, it would correctly do it. But what I want to know is if I close the app and reopen it, will it bring back this same message? Okay, and with Android, you can close the app by hitting this, you know, back button. So I'm going to click this, and 
it'll close the app right the app is not running right now okay now if I reopen the app it should bring up um, that same response and good it's still got my I'm playing I'm playing hoops and just to just to test it let's send one more and let's say still working and let's make sure that it replies with the custom response so it's still working gets sent speaking out and I'm playing working. hoops okay so what uh, this shows is that our store value and our um, get value are working correctly and now we've got an app where the custom response is persistently stored.